Hi, I'm Jane. Before I dive into my story, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Trust me, you won't want to miss this. My name's Jane, a lead project manager at Nova Tech, a booming tech company in Silicon Valley. I always believed in keeping my work and personal life separate. That's why only a handful of people knew that I was married to Eric, the CEO of Nova Tech. The day started like any other at Nova Tech, but something felt off. I walked through the maze of cubicles to my office, greeted by the usual chorus of typing and soft chatter. Settling into my desk, I sipped my coffee, ready to tackle the day's challenges. It wasn't long before Chris, one of our developers, popped his head into my office. His presence always set off alarm bells. Morning, honey. Ready for the big presentation today? His tone was too familiar, too comfortable. I stiffened. It's Jane, Chris. And yes, I'm ready. He just smirked, leaning against the doorframe. Relax, honey. Just trying to lighten the mood. Ignoring the discomfort in my stomach, I focused on my laptop. But the word honey echoed in my mind, inappropriate and unwelcome. Lunchtime came, and I headed to the break room, seeking refuge in the mundane act of microwaving my meal. But there he was again, Chris, like a shadow I couldn't shake. So, honey, got any plans this weekend? He asked, his voice a mixture of smugness and unwarranted intimacy. I prefer if you'd call me Jane, I said firmly, and my plans are none of your business. He laughed, a sound that sent a shiver down my spine. Come on, we're all friends here. No need to be so uptight. I bit back a sharp retort, determined to not let him get under my skin. The day trudged on. Presentation after presentation. Meeting after meeting. But everywhere I went, there was Chris. Commenting. Smirking. Calling me honey at every chance. In the late afternoon, I overheard a conversation that turned my blood cold. I was passing by the water cooler when I caught snippets of chatter from a group of colleagues. Have you heard? Jane and Chris are apparently an item, one whispered. Yeah, he's been calling her honey and everything, and she doesn't seem to mind. My heart raced. This was more than just annoying behavior. This was affecting my reputation. The final straw came at the end of the day. I was packing up my belongings when Chris sauntered in, his smile too wide. Great job today, honey. How about we celebrate with a drink? Enough was enough. Chris, I'm going to say this once and only once, I said my voice low but firm. I am not your honey, nor will I ever be. Your behavior is unprofessional and unwelcome. This needs to stop now. His face fell, and for a moment, I thought I saw a flicker of understanding. But then he shrugged, a smug grin returning to his lips. Sure, Jane, whatever you say, but everyone knows a no means yes from you. I watched him leave, a knot of fury and helplessness in my stomach. Little did he know who my husband was, or the strength I possessed. This was far from over. The next day at Novatech started with a buzz, not the usual kind associated with innovative tech developments, but the whispering kind that made my skin crawl. Did you see how Chris was looking at her? I overheard a couple of new interns giggling as I walked past. Yeah, and how she blushes every time he calls her honey. Their words stung like bees. I quickened my pace, trying to ignore the rising tide of rumors. Reaching my office, I found a small bouquet of flowers on my desk, no note attached. My stomach churned. I knew who they were from. This had to stop. Marching to Chris's cubicle, I found him leaning back in his chair, a self-satisfied grin plastered on his face. We need to talk, I said, my voice calm but firm. About what, honey? Chris replied, feigning innocence. Stop calling me that and stop spreading rumors. This is harassment. Chris's smirk faded. Harassment? Come on, Jane. I thought you enjoyed our little banter. There's nothing enjoyable about your behavior. It's unprofessional and disrespectful. Chris laughed, shaking his head. Jane, you're overreacting. Everyone knows it's just a bit of fun. It's not fun for me. It's creating a hostile work environment. Chris stood up, his demeanor changing. Look, I apologize if I've made you uncomfortable. It won't happen again. I wanted to believe him but his insincere tone told a different story. As the day progressed, the whispers seemed to multiply. Each passing comment felt like a needle pricking my skin. Lunch break arrived, and I found solace in the empty break room. But the peace was short-lived, as Sarah, a colleague I trusted, walked in. Jane, 
Can I talk to you for a minute? Sarah's voice was laced with concern. What's up? It's about Chris. I've heard the rumors, and I just wanted to check if you're okay. I'm not okay, Sarah. These rumors are false, and they're affecting my work. Sarah nodded sympathetically. I thought so. Don't worry. I've got your back. Her words were a small comfort, but the damage was done. The rumors had taken root, casting a shadow over my credibility. The afternoon was a blur of side glances and hushed conversations. I tried to focus on my work, but my mind kept drifting back to the situation with Chris. Towards the end of the day, I got a call from Eric, my husband and the CEO. Hey, I've been hearing some strange things at the office. Are you okay? I sighed. It's Chris. He's been spreading rumors about us and it's getting out of hand. Eric's voice hardened. I'll handle it, Jane. No, I need to deal with this myself. I appreciate your support, but this is something I have to confront head on. There was a pause before Eric spoke again. I trust your judgment, but let me know if you need anything. The day finally ended, and I left the office feeling defeated. The walk to the car felt longer than usual, each step weighed down by the burden of rumors and lies. But as I drove home, a resolve began to take shape. I wouldn't let Chris's behavior go unchecked. It was time to take a stand. Another day at Novatech, another battle to fight. I navigated the sea of cubicles, bracing myself for what lay ahead. I needed answers, and I needed them now. The first stop was Sarah's desk. She was always in the know. So, any idea why Chris is doing this? I asked, keeping my voice low. Sarah glanced around before leaning in. Word is, he's trying to get on Eric's good side. Thinks flirting with you is his ticket in. I clenched my fist. So, this was all a sick strategy to climb the corporate ladder. I needed more proof. My plan was to catch Chris in the act. The opportunity came sooner than expected. I was in the middle of a team meeting when Chris barged in, a stack of papers in his hand. Jane, thought you might need these. Anything for my favorite coworker. I kept my cool. Thanks, Chris. We're in the middle of something here. Oh, I'm sure you wouldn't mind a little interruption from me, right, honey? The room fell silent, all eyes on us. Chris, I think it's best if you leave. He left, but the damage was done. Everyone had seen the unwanted attention. It was more evidence for my case. Lunchtime. And I decided to confront Chris directly. Why are you doing this, Chris? I demanded, cornering him in the break room. He feigned ignorance. Doing what, honey? Cut the act. I know you're trying to use me to get to Eric. Chris's face twisted into a sly grin. Can you blame me? You're the boss's wife. A little favor from you goes a long way. My heart raced, but I kept my composure. Your plan won't work, and I won't be a pawn in your game. He just laughed. We'll see about that, honey. I walked away, my mind racing. This was bigger than just harassment. Chris was playing a dangerous game. The day crawled by, my mind working overtime. By the time I got home, I had a plan. Eric, I need your help, I said over dinner, but not in the way you think. I laid out my strategy to Eric, explaining how we could expose Chris without putting ourselves in the spotlight. Eric listened intently, nodding. You're brilliant, Jane. Let's do it. The next day, back at Novatech, the plan was set in motion. I casually mentioned a fake project to a colleague, making sure Chris overheard. As expected, Chris took the bait. He approached me later, his eyes gleaming with greed. Jane, about that project you mentioned. I smiled inwardly. The trap was set. Sure, Chris. Let's discuss it privately. We walked into a conference room, unaware that Eric was watching through the one-way glass. Chris started laying out his ideas, oblivious to the fact that everything was being recorded. Jane, think of the possibilities. With your influence, we can both benefit. I played along, getting him to reveal more of his scheme. After the meeting, Eric and I reviewed the recording. It was all there. Chris's manipulation, his disregard for my feelings, his ambition. It was time for Chris to face the consequences. The day of reckoning had arrived at Novatech. I walked through the office doors with a sense of purpose. Today was the day Chris's charade would crumble. The plan was simple, yet effective. We had arranged a company-wide meeting under the guise of discussing a new project. In reality, it was the stage for Chris's downfall. As I entered the conference room, I could feel the tension in the air. Colleagues whispered, sensing something big was about to unfold. Eric, 
My husband and CEO of Novatech stood at the front, his presence commanding the room. Chris sat in the front row, smugly unaware of the storm that was about to hit him. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining this special meeting, Eric began, his voice calm yet authoritative. As Eric spoke about company values and integrity, I scanned the room, my eyes finally resting on Chris. He was nodding along, oblivious to the irony of the situation. Today we also have a special announcement, Eric continued, his gaze meeting mine. I'd like to formally introduce you all to my wife, Jane. A collective gasp filled the room as all eyes turned to me. I stood up, a mixture of pride and anticipation coursing through me. Chris's face drained of color. He looked from me to Eric and back, his confident demeanor crumbling. I stepped forward, standing beside Eric. Thank you, Eric. While I am proud to be your wife, I'm also proud to be a professional here. Recent events have made it necessary to clarify this. Chris squirmed in his seat, his eyes darting around the room. The realization that his game was over was dawning on him. Harassment of any kind is unacceptable at Novatech, I continued, my voice steady. Spreading false rumors, personal attacks, or using someone's relationship to gain professional advantage cannot be tolerated. The room was silent, every word hanging heavy in the air. I've been the target of such behavior, I added, locking eyes with Chris. And it stops now. Eric nodded, his support unwavering. We've taken action against the individual responsible. Let this be a reminder of our commitment to a respectful and inclusive workplace. Chris stood up abruptly, his chair clattering behind him. This is a misunderstanding. I was just being friendly. His protest fell on deaf ears. The evidence was undeniable. The whispers, the flowers, the recorded conversation. It all painted a clear picture of Chris's intentions. Chris looked around desperately, but there was no sympathy to be found. His actions had caught up with him. I expect your resignation on my desk by the end of the day, Eric stated, his tone final. Chris staggered out of the room, his career at Novatech over. As the meeting dispersed, colleagues approached me, offering their support and apologies for not speaking up sooner. I felt a mix of relief and vindication. The truth was out, and Chris had faced the consequences of his actions. Chapter 5. Fate's Retribution The aftermath of the meeting rippled through Novatech. Chris had disappeared, a ghost of his former smug self. His desk sat empty, a stark reminder of the consequences of his actions. The office felt different. There was a sense of relief, but also a newfound respect. My colleagues approached me, their expressions a mix of admiration and apology. You handled that with such class, Jane. We're all behind you. Thanks, it wasn't easy but it had to be done. Even in the midst of this support, I couldn't help but reflect on the entire ordeal. It had been a turbulent journey, but one that had strengthened my resolve. Eric and I had dinner that night, a quiet celebration of the end of a challenging chapter in our lives. You did it, Jane. You stood up for yourself and set an example for everyone at Novatech. It wasn't just for me, Eric. It was for anyone who's ever faced harassment and felt powerless. We toasted to new beginnings, and to a future where respect and integrity took precedence. The next day, news had spread far beyond the walls of Novatech. Other companies took note, reinforcing their policies against workplace harassment. As for me, I emerged from the experience more resilient. The respect from my colleagues was palpable, and my work flourished in the newfound environment of mutual respect and support. As I sat at my desk, looking out over the bustling office, I realized this wasn't just my victory. It was a win for everyone who believed in doing the right thing. So, here's to standing up for what's right, even when it's tough. Here's to change, and here's to a better future for all of us in the workplace. One morning at work, I was surprised to find a group of colleagues at my desk. We've been talking, Jane. We want to do something about the culture here. I was taken aback. Like what? We're starting a committee for workplace respect, and we want you to lead it. Their proposal was unexpected, but welcome. I was touched by their initiative. That sounds amazing. Count me in. As weeks passed, our committee made strides. We organized workshops, opened discussions, and even revised some company policies. The change was tangible. One afternoon, as I was leaving the office, I bumped into Lena, a young intern. She looked nervous, but determined. 
Jane, can I talk to you? It's about something personal. We sat in a quiet corner of the break room. Lena's voice trembled as she shared her story of overcoming harassment at a previous job. My story had inspired her to speak up and seek change. Your courage gave me strength. Thank you, Jane. Her words hit close to home. It reminded me why standing up against Chris was so important. As I drove home that day, the sun setting in the horizon, I reflected on everything. The struggles, the victories. It was all part of a journey that had reshaped not just my life, but those around me. Remember, no matter how tough it gets, you're not alone. Together, we can make a difference. This is Jane, signing off. Like, subscribe, and stay strong. Has there ever been a moment in your career where you had to stand up for yourself against unfair treatment or harassment, just like Jane did? Share your stories and thoughts in the comments. Let's support each other and create a community of strength. And if you've enjoyed this story, please like the video and consider subscribing for more. Your support means we can continue sharing stories that matter. Thanks for watching.